As Doug shared, similarly, I would like to clearly state that people can change from same-sex attracted <clears throat> to opposite-sex attracted. I've done it myself personally, and as a professional psychotherapist over the last 22 years, I've helped hundreds of same-sex attracted men and women through therapy and teleconferencing classes come out straight. And through healing seminars held in this country and around the world, I've helped thousands and thousands of men and women who have unwanted SSA or same-sex attraction fulfill what I call their heterosexual destiny. Change is possible. And anyone who says to the contrary is misinformed. Either they think if they're struggling with it that it's not possible because of their own personal journey. To them I say you or they have not dealt with the causation or the etiology or the issues that precipitated one's SSA. Because as I uh, said on Larry King, I've done a lot of media I was debating a lesbian psychiatrist from the American Psychiatric Association, and I said, this and this fit together beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> this and this, it just doesn't work, or this and this. <laughs> Boom. So biologically, we are designed, men and women, for each other. It works. And the other two things, it's just not, you know. It doesn't work. It's not how we're biologically designed. I struggled with unwanted same-sex attraction from the time I was in elementary school. And from middle and high school, I began to experiment with other guys in my class. I grew up Jewish. Cohen, you can see the nose. <laughs> a little more pronounced than yours, Arthur. <laughs> Ask because you're from the priestly class. Absolutely, right. <laughs> the bigger the priest, the more priestly, I don't know. Although my mother's maiden name was Goldberg, so we're brothers. <laughs> Cohen and Goldberg, I'm a thoroughbred. <laughs> so I experimented a lot with other friends in school, and when I went to college up in Boston, I had a few boyfriends my first year and then a partner for three years. And it was actually through him that I came to meet the Lord. <laughs> God is very amusing. At that time, I attended a church, and they very misguidingly told me, find the right woman, and she'll straighten you out. Mm. So I found the right woman, and it never straightened me out. And it was sheer hell for both of us for quite a long time. It took a lot of years to figure out why I had those desires, and it took even longer to heal the causes that created the SSA or same-sex attraction in the first place. What I learned in my healing journey is that my SSA is a message from my soul, and it was trying to teach me many things. It's not from the devil and one cannot flagellate it away because it's connected to the soul and heart of the child within that individual. That's why to judge them is to hurt them. Mm -hmm. Because those desires, as I learned about them, taught me so much about myself and about life. And throughout my life, it's been my greatest teacher. What was once a curse is now a phenomenal blessing. I spoke to a group of men, a couple hundred men, in my church years ago, uh, heterosexual straight guys, majority, and I started by saying, I feel sorry for all of you because most of you never struggled with SSA. Poor you. Oh. And they went, what? <laughs> I said, because you can get away with masturbating till the calcium jumps over the moon to doing porn, internet stuff, and you know, it's okay. Even have an affair. Okay, it's wrong. But have a homosexual issue, especially in a house of worship, <laughs> and you know, people don't even want to know you. So I had to deal with my stuff. I said, you guys get away with yours. And 
never have to look in the mirror. I feel sorry for you mm -hmm. because it has been my greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. Through family, through friends, through mentors, and with the help of my loving God, I came out straight. And I've been living my dream married. My wife is a saint because the first five years were unadulterated hell. But she stuck with me, and uh, this is my family. Oops, Oops, far. Oops that was my family. <laughs> <laughs> my wife hails from Korea, and we've been married 27 and a half years. Our oldest son is uh, in medicine. This is our daughter. She's a high school English teacher. And our youngest is 15, going on 50. As a teen, he knows more than all of us, of yeah. course. So God is good, and I am grateful to all of them who have stood with me because after I came out of this, God called me to help those with unwanted SSA fulfill their heterosexual dreams, and then to educate everyone about the truth of homosexuality. So this evening, the first talk I'll share about in just a moment will be about the meaning, the causes, and the healing of homosexuality. The second talk tomorrow morning will address how to help those with unwanted SSA for family members, for friends, and for the entire community. How we can be agents of change. And the final talk I will give tomorrow afternoon will be for the helping profession, for therapists, clergy, and ministry leaders. However, if anyone's dealing with same-sex attraction, or you have a loved one dealing with it, this talk is for you as well, because we, who are dealing with this either in the family or a close person or oneself, we are the educators of those in the religious and therapeutic community because most of them don't have a clue how to help people like us or our loved ones. So we need to raise them up. In the mental health and medical profession, there's very little literature how to, in, and training for those do, doing this type of work, helping those with unwanted SSA. So the final talk will be how to help those with unwanted SSA and their loved ones which will be a good talk for everyone, of course. Before I begin now, I would like to thank God for saving my life like he saved dogs, as he shared. And uh, Greg will share how God saved his life. I would be dead. I would be dead, and you know, I could go into my story, but uh, no time. And secondly, I thank my wife and my kids for standing by me the last 22 and a half years of going through this mad journey and doing this work. And finally, I would like to thank Doug and Homosexuals Anonymous for allowing me to come and to share with you over the next, uh, this evening and tomorrow. Uh, please hold your questions until after and I will give a few minutes of Q&A. All right? So this evening is about causes, and meaning of SSA and healing, in brief, in brief. Um, what I'm going to share is coming from the book Coming Out Straight, Understanding and Healing Homosexuality. It's a protocol, a four-stage model, helping people change from same-sex to opposite-sex attractive. And uh, the book was written about 10 years ago, and last year I put it on CD, and I updated it with the CD series, a lot of uh, new information and insights. The second talk tomorrow morning will be from Gay Children Straight Parents, A Plan for Family Healing. And this is a 12-step model for parents, for siblings, for family members in the entire church or religious community, how to help people with SSA. And that's from the book Gay Children Straight Parents, and it's also a CD series. And then the third talk will come from our counselor training program. I stopped doing individual <coughs> therapy about three to four years ago, and now I just go around the world training therapists, clergy, and ministry leaders. And from that five-day training, we put together the counselor training program. It's a CD series and a 182-page manual. Basically, it's the nuts and bolts, 
how to take somebody <clears throat> from A to Z, from the time they call to want their initial intake session until you uh, help them in the dating process. And there's a lot of information about how to help people who are coming out of this because that's a whole unique uh, perspective. I last year spoke, I taught a lot of pastors. I live in the DC area. So I trained a lot of uh, pastors there. And I did a presentation in several churches last year called Let's Talk About Sex. And uh, it's more broad based. It's for sexual brokenness. OSA, opposite sex attracted, and SSA folks. Talks about causes, why people do what they don't want to do. And then the second talk is what we can do about it. So that's in the Let's Talk About Sex. I'm not going to go into that uh, this, uh, these two days, but I, I brought that with me. So tonight, everything I'm sharing about is from coming out straight. And three essential pillars I want to teach you first about SSA. Number one, no one is essentially born with SSA. There is no scientific data to substantiate a genetic, biological, or hormonal basis for SSA. And I will quote you some scientific literature that states that in just a moment. Number two, no one chooses to have SSA. Anybody want to volunteer? I've spoken all over the world and I haven't gotten one yet. So who in their right or left brain would want this? It's always the result of many different conditions, which I'll go into in a few moments. And three, people can change. If they want to, it is possible. And I'll show you the protocol soon. And we'll be talking, I'll be talking more in depth tomorrow about that. So we hear about these scientific studies in the news all the time showing the brains of the homosexual guy look more like heterosexual girls and the homosexual girls look more like straight guys and the finger length is different and you hear about one study after another coming out all the time in the newspapers. So what are they really saying? So basically, again, people are not born this way. However, if you look at these researchers, the majority are homosexually oriented. So they want to prove that we're born this way so that they can get acceptance and love. It's understandable because prejudice is wrong 100% of the time. That's right. Be it in the name of God or in the name of secular humanism, it's wrong to be bigoted toward anybody with SSA because even they never chose to have it. However, they are misusing science. Shakespeare said, even the devil can quote scripture for his own purpose. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's worth their weight in salt in the scientific or medical community knows how to massage and manipulate data to say whatever you want it to say. You can build a study to say what you want it to say. And, uh, okay, we'll go into that in a few moments. So, most likely, what are we looking at in these studies purporting that people are born this way? Number one, we know that, like, the brain, it changes through repeated behavior. The plasticity of the brain we are seeing more and more changes through repetition, repetition. So rather than looking at the cause of homosexuality in many of these studies of the brain, we may be looking at the effects of homosexual behavior and how it changed their structure. Secondly, anybody who is SSA is developmentally delayed. They have not, they've been stuck in early stages of psychosexual and psychosocial development. So of course their brains will not be fully developed yet because they haven't yet, the man internalized his sense of masculinity and the woman her sense of femininity. So of course the brains are still immature. So, and many of these boys, well we'll go into the causation in a moment. So this is what a lot of the science is really observing but yet they're spinning it to say people are born this way. 